Shalom. I'm Elder Pop Sammy from the tribe of Judah. Uh, reading the scriptures today, and I saw some things that need to be addressed. I spoke to uh, several several brothers, and and um, and I decided to make this video for Captain Amy. Captain Amy is a person that's in ATL. And he dressed in purple. Uh, he's so fascinated about the uh, Christmas tree that uh, that's in Jeremiah 10 that he thinks the subject is about a Christmas tree. That God wrote about a Christmas tree. That's his main focus on a Christmas tree. But like the scripture says, it's a double meaning. And I'm going to slow it down a little bit so uh, we can get more understanding from this. And I'm not picking on him. It's just something need to be addressed that he's so fascinated about this tree. And it's not the tree that you are focused on. Uh, as you know, I like to read off a few precepts. To, and you have to Keep in mind these precepts because Matthew 4 and 4, it says every word that proceeded out of God's mouth. Don't take none of his words lightly. So when you jump over some words, you're not getting the clear story that's been told. So you have to go back and go through it completely. He said every word. So to stay in the spirit and to get us in the spirit. And I go through precepts. Also, I want you to start praying before you get started reading the Bible. Because this Bible is a tool and it's also a war book. You're not fighting against carnal. You're fighting spirits. Okay? So you have to stay focused on that. This is not a book to have vain glory. It's not something that you're supposed to show out on another brother that you know more. But when you see brothers going in the wrong direction, it's for correcting your brothers and also it's to correct you. Uh, so let's get into it. We're going to open up the book to Hosea in chapter 12 and verse 10. And it reads, I have also spoken by the prophets, and I have multiplied visions and used similitudes by the ministry of the prophets. Similitudes are explaining something carnally. But God wants you to get the spiritual understanding of it. You must worship him in spirit and in truth. Spirit and in truth, okay? Um, the next one we're going to go to is Job 11 and verse 6. And I meditate these precepts all the time. Job, the Most High is not carnal. He's spiritual. So you must worship him in spirit and in truth, okay? He's not carnal. So you want the spiritual understanding. Job chapter 11, verse 6, and it reads, And that he will shew thee the secrets of wisdom. Secrets of wisdom. So it's a secret behind this. You have to search for it. It's not carnal. You can see that. It's a secret behind it. The secret's going to be in the spiritual understanding. All right? That they are double. To that which is. Now therefore that God exacteth of thee less than thy iniquity deserve. For an example. One of the Ten Commandments say thou shalt not kill. Right? But the scripture also says 
that you have to kill the old man, which is the old person and become a new man. You see that? So God, um, God exacted of the less than thy iniquity deserveth. So if you're thinking about doing that, won't you, you should think, think on focusing on destroying that old person in you. Because you actually can do that. Get rid of that old person. Thou should not kill, but God said it's okay to kill the old man in you. So you hate the sin that's in you. You understand that? Okay. Um, the next one we're going to go to is Galatians 5 and 3. We're going to touch down, uh, touch on some meat. Because that's what we got to start giving out some meat. Because the meat is deeper and it's spiritual understanding. So we're going to touch on meat today. Um, and it's going to be broke down. Jeremiah 10 is going to be read carnally, but we're going to rightly divide spiritually what it's talking about. So Galatians 5 and verse 3. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. Right there you say, oh, that's carnal law. No, that's not what it's saying. See, because the carnal law, just like you've seen, we just read, killing the old man, is spiritual understanding now. You understand? Keep that in mind. You have to do the whole law. You have to kill the old man that's sacrificing the animal. Everything you have that's written, Malachi 3 and 6 says he trains not. So you have to think spiritual now, what he's talking about, that Moses actually wrote Carly. It's a spiritual understanding to it. You get it? All right. All right. And some going to come out today. Um, Romans 8 and 2. I always like to go through that. Uh, I, I think about that all the time. I'm going to start at Romans chapter 8, verse 1. There is, therefore, now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, the Word of God, who walk not after the flesh, carnal, but after the Spirit. That's what we Focus on over the elders of Israel. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, the word of God, have made me free from the law of sin and death. So we're going to go to Jeremiah 10 and 1. And let's break this down carnally. Then we're going to go to the spiritual side, which is the secret that's behind the double meaning. Okay. Jeremiah chapter 10 and verse 1. Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Okay? That right there is very important because we're going to um, go over some meat. So remember that verse right there, O house of Israel. Okay? Thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. For the heaven, the, I'm sorry, for the heathen are dismayed at them. For the customs of those people are vain. Don't make any sense. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. They deck it with silver and with gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers that it moves not. Now, when you think carnally, there's nothing wrong with that. Because when you read it, it actually sounds like it, the, the chapter swaying toward a Christmas tree. Okay, let's keep reading. They are upright as the palm tree, but speak not. They must needs be born because they cannot go. Be not afraid of them, 
for they cannot do evil, they can't harm. Neither also is it in them to do good. For as much as there is none like unto thee, O Lord, thou art great, and thy name is great in might. Okay? Who would not fear thee, O king of nations? For to thee doth it appurtent, for as much as among all the wise men of the nations, and in all their kingdoms there is none like unto thee, none like unto the Most High. But they are altogether brutish and foolish. The stock is a doctrine of vanities. Silver spread into place is brought from Tarshish and gold from Euphrates, the work of the workmen and of the hands of the founder. Blue and purple is their clothing. They are all the work of cunning men. Okay, let's break this down. Because we got to help the brother. He's thinking... You're Captain Amy. And uh, he's in purple. And I'm going to leave it at that. Let's go to it. Jeremiah chapter 10. Uh, chapter 10, verse 2. Thus saith the Lord, Learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. For the heathen are dismayed at them. The size of heaven, what it's talking about, is the host of heaven. You got the stars, you got the moon, and you got the sun. Those are the host of heaven that's, that, that's there. Don't be amazed at them. But it's a spiritual, don't be dismayed at them, but it's a spiritual side. Okay, now we're going to the meat. Okay. Now go to Deuteronomy, chapter 4, and 14. And it reads, This still Moses wrote this, but we have to transform it on the spiritual side. And the Lord commanded me at that time to teach you statutes and judgment that you might do them in the land whether you go over to possess it. Remember that word possess. Take ye therefore good heed unto yourselves, for ye saw no manner of similitude on the day that the Lord spake unto you in horror out in the midst of the fire. Lest ye corrupt yourselves and make you a graven image the similitude, the similitude of any figure. The similitude of any figure. Remember that. The likeness of male or female. Remember that. The likeness of any beast. Beast is a man. A man is a beast. A spiritual name for the man within you. It's Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 18. Write that down. Now, let's, let's read that. I said in my heart, Matthew 15, also Mark chapter 7, verse 21. Write that down because that's where your heart is, your mind, okay? Concerning the state of the sons of men, that God might manifest them, and that they might see that themselves are beasts, the sons of men. You notice that he say the sons of men. He do not say the sons of God. Keep that in mind. Go back to Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 17. The likeness of any beast that is on the earth, the likeness of any winged fowl that flies in the air. The likeness of anything that creepeth on the ground, the likeness of any fish that is in the waters beneath the earth. That's all spiritual right now. I understand what it is, but honestly, I do. Because I know definitions, spiritual definitions. You got to learn the spiritual definitions of what the word now. Not the carnal definitions. 
You need to learn the spiritual definitions now, what God called them in the spiritual world, okay? At least thou lift up thine eyes unto heaven, and when thou seest the sun and the moon and the stars, even all the hosts of heaven should be driven to worship them and serve them with the Lord thy God that divided unto all nations under the whole heaven. You see that? Unto all heaven. Okay? Let's go to John chapter 11 and 45. You see, all nations. Okay? The many of the Jews which came to Mary and has seen the things which Jesus did. Believe on him. Okay, they believe on Christ, what he was doing. So much. But some of them went their ways to the Pharisees. The same thing happening now. And told them what things Jesus had done. Verse 47. Then gathered the chief priest and the Pharisees a council. And said, what do we? For this man doeth many miracles. Verse 48. If we let him thus alone, all men will believe on him. And the Romans shall come and take away both our place and nation. The Pharisees were so scared that the Romans was going to take away their place and their nation. In their mind, the Pharisees considered themselves having that nation. It's their nation. So you go back to Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 19. At least thou lift up thine eyes unto heaven, and when thou seest the sun and the moon, and the stars, even all the hosts of heaven, should it be driven to worship them and serve them, which the Lord thy God hath divided unto all nations under the whole heaven. I want you to look at stargazing. Elder Stephen and I did a video on stargazing. I want you to look at video three and video four. And it's going to explain to you what the host of heaven is. You have to get full details. The sun represents wisdom and knowledge. The moon represents understanding. The stars represent man. So when you see a person that perceived to have wisdom, knowledge, understanding, that's a man, and you are you lift him up. Psalms 148 and verse 1. He's elevated, and you start idolizing him. Christ is Christ is talking about that. The most high hates that. That's when you go back. To Jeremiah chapter 10. And let's read that again. Thus said the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. Similar to. Similar to. Don't be like that heathen, because now it's a similar to to that. Signs of heaven. For the heathen are dismayed at them. For the customs of the people are vain, for one cut us a tree out of the forest. Let's see about this forest. Go to, my, go to Isaiah chapter 10 and verse 17. And the light of Israel shall be for a fire, and its holy one for a flame. And it shall burn and devour his thorns and his briars in one day. It said, and the light of Israel shall be for fire and his holy one for a flame. It's not saying it's in Israel. 
Israel is spiritual. That's a spiritual name. You got to learn how to rightly divide. Okay? Right now, these men has already converted and God himself have given them their name, Israel. You can call yourself Israel all you want. You can go change it at the courthouse. You can have an ID card. But God have to give you that name. And we're going to get into that. Because this right here has got to be broke down. Verse 17. Isaiah 10 and 17. And the light of Israel shall be for fire, and his holy one for a flame, and it shall burn and devour his thorns and his brows in one day. The Pharisees are thorns. The brows are the Sadducees. And it shall consume the glory of the forest. Forest of trees. Trees. And of his fruit field, both soul and body. And they shall be as when a standard bearer fan. And the rest of the trees of his forest shall be few, that a child may write them. He comparing the forest to many trees. Now I said in verse 17 that God is the only one can give it that name. And because everything I say, I have to prove it. Right? Okay. Let's go to Genesis chapter 32 and 28. You know where I'm going. Okay. Let's start at 24. Genesis, Genesis 32 and 24. And Jacob was left alone, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of day. You notice it wrestled a man. We say sometimes a spirit. An angel. We say that. We've been going on through custom saying that. But it's actually a man. This man is in with inside of Jacob. Jacob is wrestling. The spiritual part is wrestling the carnal man. And we're going to get to that. Verse 24. And Jacob was left alone and were, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh. And the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. That's right there. That's a heavy breakdown right there. That's a spiritual breakdown. I'm not going to share that right now. But that's heavy right there. It's a spiritual breakdown for it. And he said, let me go for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not. Uh, let thee go, except thou bless me. And they said unto him, What is thy name? And he said, Jacob, the spiritual man. He's fighting inside himself. And it's going to come out in a little while. The carnal man fighting the spiritual man. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. He named himself Israel. Jacob want to change. He Changing himself. For as a prince has thou power with God and with man and has prevailed. See, he calling himself that. Okay? Now, read it on your own, but it's going to be spiritual written. Now, let's go to Genesis 35 and 10. Okay? And God said unto him, Thy name is Jacob. It's a reason why he given it his name now. We're going to come back to this. Let's go to 35 and 1. Go back to Genesis 35 and 1. And God said unto Jacob, Arise, go up to Bethel and dwell there, and make there an altar unto God that appeareth unto thee when the, thou fleddest from the face of Esau, thy brother. Then Jacob said unto his household and to all that were with him, put away the strange gods that are among you and be clean and change your garments. He's telling them to change their garments, their doctrine. Go, go to Job 29 and 14. 
Because a garment is a doctrine. This is what Job told them in so many words. Job 29 and 14. I put on righteousness and it clothed me. My judgment was as a robe of diadem, a crown. So when you go back to Genesis 35 and 2, then Jacob said unto his household and to all that were with him, put away the strange God. He mean put away that old man of you. His sons were still wicked. Remember they threw his, his, his um, Joseph in the whale. Remember that. They were still dealing with the old man within themselves. Them boys were still wicked. Then Jacob said unto his household and to all that were with him, put away the strange gods that are among you and be clean. You know, doggone well, they, wouldn't, they didn't have no stash. Now, Rachel had that stuff. She did with no ornament. But these boys, no. It was the gods since them they had to put away that old man. He was telling them. Put it away. He can't do it, but he has to tell him so he can get his, the old man, out of him. So he doing everything to be called Israel and change your garments. See, so the thing is, you got to learn how to read and rightly divide the word. That's why Jacob told him in 35, Genesis 35 and 2. Then Jacob said unto his household and to all that were with him, put away the strange gods, that old man and you sons that are among you and be clean and change your garments. Change that doctrine that you got. That carnal understanding, you're wicked. You got to be spiritual to kill this old man. That's the only way you can do it. Now, we're going to go right back to Genesis chapter 35 and verse 10. Because this is me. Okay? And God said unto him, Thy name is Jacob. Thy name shall not be called any more Jacob, but Israel. God said, I'm giving you this name because you're getting your household in order. Them boys, it's up to them boys to dog on change. Jacob changed inside. Something else he did prior to this too. He was teaching. He was teaching. We'll get into that. And it's going to mention it right here. Put on your spiritual eyes. And God said unto him, Thy name is Jacob. Thy name shall not be called any more Jacob, but Israel. Y'all know I like saying that. Israel shall be thy name. And he called his name Israel. He earned it. And God said unto him, I am God Almighty. Be fruitful, fruitful, fruitful. Mm. And multiply a nation and a company of nations shall be of thee, and kings shall come up thy loins. Mm. And the land which I gave Abraham and Isaac to thee, I will give it, and to thy seed, and after thee will I give the land. Currently thinking, a lot of stuff I read right there, but spiritually, we're going to break it down. Then we're going to get back to that tree. Because I have to let you know that we read earlier, and um, it was in um, Jeremiah 10 and 17 through 19, who God is talking about Israel in that, that verse right there. So we're going to go right back to that after we break this down, Genesis 35. Because you got to get this understanding. Let's go. Back to Genesis 35, 11. And God said unto him, I am God Almighty. Be fruitful, plant, plant. Write this down, Luke chapter 8, verse 11. That's when he started talking spiritual to Jacob right here. And multiply a nation, the nation of Israel, spiritual people, and a company of nations, spiritual people, shall be of thee, and kings shall come up out of thy loins. Loins. 
Carter, you thinking your bowels, your belly. That's not what he's talking about. Go to 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 13. Some of y'all probably already there. Y'all young men can flip them pages. Good God. <laughs> but I got arthritis. 1 Peter 1 and 13. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind. He telling Jacob to teach him from his mind. Be sober. Don't get drunk on those doctrines. Especially them carnal doctrine. And hope to the end of the grace. Grace is a law. That's a spiritual law. I broke that down in the previous class before this. That is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. The word of God. As obedient children, not fashioning yourself according to the former lust in your ignorance. That's what you, you keep going, carnal, through ignorance. But as he which have called you is holy. That's spiritual. So ye, ye holy in all manner of conversation. Because it is written, be ye holy for I am holy. Spiritual, not carnal, spiritual. So when you go back to Genesis chapter 11, and God said unto him, I am God Almighty, be fruitful, plant that seed. Luke chapter 8, verse 11. I get so excited. Luke chapter 8, verse 11. Let's go to that. Because we got to break down this tree. Now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. So Jacob got to plant that seed to be fruitful and multiply. Now, go back to Genesis chapter 35 and verse 11. And God said unto him, I'm God Almighty. Be fruitful, plant that seed, and multiply. A nation and a covenant of nations shall be of thee, and kings shall come out thy loin, the mind. 1 Peter chapter 1 and 13, teach them. And the land which I gave Abraham and Isaac to be, I will give it. And to thy seed, Luke chapter 8, verse 11, after thee will I give the land. Spiritual. 